In this episode of Lifespan News, hyperbaric oxygen therapy increases telomere length and decreases immunosenescence in isolated blood cells. There's a new course to teach doctors about longevity medicine. Inflammation decreases NAD plus during aging. Diluting aged blood rejuvenates old brains. There's a new web series from Seeking Delphi called The Longevity Dialogues. Welcome to Lifespan News, your source for longevity science updates. I'm your host, Brent Nally. If you missed our last episode, then you can watch it by clicking the card above. We encourage you to check the description below for links to these stories. Lifespan News is part of Life X10 Show, or X10 for short, and both are moving to X10's own YouTube channel soon. We encourage you to subscribe to the new X10 YouTube channel by clicking the card above. You can also find a link in the description below. Once you're subscribed, be sure to click the notification bell and select all notifications to ensure you don't miss any videos. While you're there, be sure to watch X10's new channel trailer. For our first story, hyperbaric oxygen therapy increases telomere length and decreases immunosenescence in isolated blood cells. Researchers in Israel have reported that hyperbaric oxygen therapy, or HBOT, increased telomere length and reduced the senescent cell count among immune cells. HBOT is breathing pure oxygen in a high-pressure chamber. The researchers measured the telomere length of B and T cells and the number of senescent T cells after 30 HBOT sessions, 60 HBOT sessions, and post-HBOT. The researchers found a statistically significant increase in B cell telomere length and reduction in the number of senescent T cells. However, the sample size for the test was quite small and there was no control group so take the results with a grain of salt. There was a media circus about this story last week, which is a bit frustrating to the longevity community. To learn more, we recommend you read the full article seen here. You can also watch this awesome video seen here about this recent HBO teen news by the Shiki Science Show, hosted by our friend Eleanor Shiki. As always, both links are in the description below. For our next story, there's a new course to teach doctors about longevity medicine. Deep Longevity is a spin-off of In Silico Medicine and has recently launched a longevity medicine course. The course is aimed at physicians and medical students who want to learn about the rapidly evolving field of aging research. According to Deep Longevity, the goal of this initiative is bridging the gap between academic research and frontline physicians. Topics covered are biogerontology, theories and hallmarks of aging, basic aging pathways and mechanisms behind potential geroprotective initiatives, aging clocks, and more. There's a huge disconnect between aging research in the lab and medical practitioners who directly deal with patients. Aging research labs around the world are often years ahead of overall medical knowledge, and this is a serious problem in the drive to create a comprehensive longevity ecosystem. So to address this, there needs to be a bridge between current academic research and frontline physicians. So if you're a physician and you'd like to learn more, then as always, you can find a link to the course in the description below. Moving on, inflammation decreases NAD plus during aging. A new study published in Nature Metabolism by Buck Institute researchers identified inflammation as one of the causes of NAD plus decline. NAD plus is a coenzyme present in all living cells, and it's indispensable for their correct function. It's been known for a while that NAD plus levels dwindle as we age, and that there's a link between this decline and age-related pathologies. This new study found that chronic age-related inflammation, known as inflammation, is one of the culprits. The researchers discovered that pro-inflammatory cells, known as M1-like macrophages, accumulate in visceral white adipose tissue and liver, both during aging and as a consequence of acute responses to inflammation. These macrophages express high levels of an enzyme known as CD38, which breaks NAD plus down into other molecules, which then causes NAD plus decline. The study also found that senescent cells accumulate in the same kind of tissues with aging. These cells are notorious for their inflammatory secretion, termed SASP. According to this study, this secretion induces the proliferation of macrophages, hence higher levels of NAD+, consuming CD38. The discovery of this link may offer new therapeutic avenues to maintain NAD plus levels with age. This new study also suggests that supplementation of NAD plus might be like shoveling water with a pitchfork, 
because you might get some water out at first, but you're probably not going to get very far. For our next story, diluting aged blood rejuvenates old brains. A new study from the Convoy Laboratory at University of California, Berkeley, provides more evidence for the already known notion that the dilution of pro-aging factors in blood induces tissue rejuvenation. Previous experiments have shown the regenerative potential of blood factors, which spurred two main hypotheses, that young blood contained rejuvenative factors or that old blood contained pro-aging factors. Other studies from the Convoy lab showed that young blood factors are not needed for systemic rejuvenation of mammalian tissues. But rather than diluting, old plasma induced rejuvenative effects, enhancing the health and repair of muscle, liver, and neurogenesis in an area of the brain known as the hippocampus. All of this occurring in two-year-old mice, which is fairly old for mice. In their latest experiment, the Convoy Lab built upon previous experiments and demonstrated that in a single session of old plasma dilution, old mice experienced reduced neural inflammation and performed much better in object recognition tests. The researchers were also able to exclude the attenuation of SASP as the main mechanism behind this procedure. The SASP is a pro-inflammatory mix of chemicals secreted by senescent cells. The researchers purged senescent cells in a group of mice to see if this had comparable results as old blood plasma dilution, but it turned out to be much less effective. This suggests that the rejuvenative effects induced by old blood plasma dilution can't be attributed simply to senescent cell elimination. For our final story, there's a new web series from Seeking Delphi called The Longevity Dialogues. The latest episode features Dr. Aubrey de Grey, Dr. Nir Barzilia, and Lifespan.io's co-founder and president, Keith Comito. This web series aims to bring together notable figures from the aging research and futurist community to discuss healthy longevity from multiple angles. Among other things, the guests in this episode and the host, Mark Sackler, discuss the infamous silo mentality that is unfortunately widespread in the research community. The silo mentality is the tendency for researchers to focus only on their own area of interest, for example, cancer or Alzheimer's disease, without looking at the big picture suggested by an ever-growing amount of evidence, namely that aging is the common driver of age-related diseases and a legitimate target for medical intervention. The discussion also included the thorny question, whether aging should or shouldn't be classified as a disease and whether this would be beneficial for the field. And finally, the importance of getting the public on board by informing the public about the exciting aging research happening in the lab right now, helping the public determine solid science from pseudoscience. I enjoyed watching this entire video and hope that you will as well. You can find a link in the description below. That's all the news for this video. Before you go, there's a few quick, free, and simple things that you can do to help us solve the human aging problem. If you haven't already, Please like this video, share this video on your social media, let us know what you think in the comments below, and also if you haven't already, please make sure that you're subscribed and you have the notification bell turned to all notifications. We really appreciate it and we look forward to seeing you in the next video at least as healthy as you are now.